Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here with some astronomy news. I've had a lot of folks ask me about this comet, which has kind of caught social media and the, the, the web um, on fire and gone viral with people making these crazy claims of um, visible comet and uh, 50,000 years. Um, so let's kind of break down what's true, what's hype, and what there is to get excited for. So this picture you're looking at right now is a picture of the comet. Uh, sent to me from Tony Rice. He's a NASA ambassador. His friend took a picture of this comet, um, I think about a week ago. This is comet uh, 2022 because it was discovered just last year, E3ZTF. Okay, so you're looking at this picture going, oh, that looks awesome. Word of caution. This picture was taken with a telescope with a about, I think it was a 17 minute exposure. So not something you can see with the naked eye. Right now, you need a very good telescope or a camera to even get an image like this. Um, a lot of folks want to know, hey, is this going to be visible? I've seen a lot of crazy headlines of people saying it's going to be visible. And here's the small problem. This is actually a view of where the comet is tonight at around 344 in the morning. That's where you would look in the northeast sky from Charlotte, North Carolina, or really anywhere in the Carolinas. But I want you to notice a couple of things at the top of the screen here. So this is a program called Stellarium I use. I just added um, the comet to this program so we could kind of see where it is. This magnitude thing here, magnitude 7.33 reduced to 7.59 by the air mass. So it makes it harder to see. The air mass reduces it. 7.59 is not naked eye visible. The lower that number the brighter it is. And if you're not familiar with the brightness scale, here's kind of a rough estimate of what it looks like. So it goes from high numbers, which nothing is visible, to negative numbers, which are very bright. So this seems weird, but apparent magnitude, as the number gets negative, it gets brighter. So the sun, obviously, super bright. The moon, super bright. Venus is the brightest object in the night sky, um, other than the moon. And then Sirius, Polaris. Um, and then you see the naked eye. Naked eye is roughly around six, but I would caution you even with that. Naked eye means it's faintly, barely visible in the darkest of locations. So think Outer Banks, rural areas, maybe in the mountains, but really out west, the Badlands of the Dakotas, desert southwest areas where there you could see every star in the sky. You really want that to be below five for even a slightest chance. And in urban, suburban settings like here in the Carolinas where we have so much light pollution, you really want it closer to like four. Um, so I just wanted to put it out there. It, now, that doesn't mean you can't see it with binoculars, um, a good set of binoculars in Charlotte or a, a, even a small telescope or a camera, you will likely be able to see it. But with the naked eye, it's not very likely. And I'm gonna show you what this will look like when it becomes its brightest. So notice the number up there, 7.59. That is not very bright. So let's go to when this should be its brightest. Um, and I've got a curvature that kind of shows when that brightness scale occurs. I actually, let me show you real quick. This is the forecast. Now, on this scale, this is very pessimistic, only predicted to be 7.27. Some indications are it could be closer to 5, 5.5 on the brightness indication. And that's roughly around February 1st. So let's go to February 1st. I'm going to fast forward this all the way to February 1st. So we'll go through time. We're time traveling into the future. Um, we'll go through time. Um, you'll see the time at the bottom of the screen here. I'm going to go all the way to the end of the month. Um, we'll get to towards the beginning of February when it should be brighter and brighter and brighter. I'm going to stop this roughly around the 30, 31st of January. So here we are. This is us. Well, this is in the. This is 6:30 p.m. on January 30th. Notice the brightness is now around 5.65 um, in the northeast sky. Now the higher it is in the sky the brighter it will get because you're looking through less atmosphere. So we'll go through time here. Um, let's stop it right about there. Notice the air mass becomes thinner. Uh, just any time you're looking at the night sky, things straight above your head, you're looking through the thinnest part of the atmosphere, so there's less reduction. The other problem with this night, you see the moon. The moon's about 80, 88% full right about this time. So that washes out even faint objects. You can see from th this is a simulation. I can't even see the comet unless I zoom in and, it, and then you zoom in, you see deep sky objects. I have to zoom in like that and there it is. So this is when it's at near its brightest. Let's go all the way to February 1st. I'll stop this on February 1st. We'll go a couple more days in the future. The only good news is it's up most of the night. It won't be below the horizon. You can see it there rotating in the northeast sky. I'm going to go all the way to February 1st. Stop. This is around 7 p.m. at night. Um, 
5.58 on the brightness scale. So maybe in the darkest location, this doesn't even have light pollution. So again, this is something worth taking a look at if you have binoculars or a telescope or a camera. Um, it will get brighter as the month goes on and into February, but don't get your hopes super high that you're going to go outside and see something out of the movies like a giant comet in the sky. <laughs> that is not going to happen. In fact, you would not even notice this unless you stared at this with a camera, binoculars, or a telescope in a very dark location, basically nowhere near the city, and then you would have a chance to see it. But, of course, I will post pictures as it gets brighter. I am hoping to take my camera out and do some long exposure astrophotography and hopefully with the camera we'll get to see it but the key part of taking a picture of it you got to know where to point your camera because you're not going to see it with the naked eye so oftentimes what I do is I take a picture of this part of the sky as a long exposure and then I use the, the back of my camera and I zoom in on it and I find where it is and then I can zoom in even tighter and if I know I'm pointed in the right location I might use neighboring stars to kind of focus and I'll do long exposures high ISO and take some sample pictures and hopefully some of them will show up and we'll see the comet. Um, I was able to do that with Comet New Eyes a couple years ago. Um, and even though I could not see with the naked eye, it was pretty cool to take pictures of it. So I will continue to post updates on Comet uh, 2022 E3 ZTF. But just be careful what you see online. Don't get super excited that it's going to be naked eye visible. Most likely you're going to need your good binoculars or your telescope or a camera to get a good view of it.